Hello everyone, welcome back again. My name is Jesse and in this wonderful tutorial, I'm trying to see how to build web APIs in Python. So what is a web API or what is an API for short? So an API stands for Application Programming Interface. So there are several forms of interfaces when you're trying to work with computers and then devices. We have graphic user interface, we have command line interface. All of these things are interface. They allow us to be able to communicate between two or more devices, two or more applications, right? So an API is an interface between two or more applications, right? It allows us to be able to communicate between two or more devices or more applications. So it's a messenger or a contract. So let me explain what I mean. So for example, let's say I have this particular software, right? I have my database here, right? I have these two databases here. This is in DB, right? In case I want to connect or communicate with this particular database, I can use several formats. So the first way is I can use my graphic user interface, which is a DB browser. This is a graphic user interface, right? I can just go to my open DB. I'll browse to that particular database that I have, which is found inside my desktop here, right? And then I'll look for it. Right? I'll check for that particular database that I have here, right? Which is this channel. And I'll open it. So this is a graphic user interface, right? Which I'm using to communicate or interact with my database. That is the first method of connecting or interacting with my database, right? Very, very interesting. So I can just click on something, all of these things, get information, see how it is, and all of these things. That is a GUI. That is the first method of interacting with my database, right? The next method is that I can also use a command line interface. So for example, if I come back to this same place that I have, I have my database here. I want to be able to interact with it, just as I was able to use this GUI, DB browser, to be able to interact with it. I can use this particular option of SQLite 3, then I'll open my database. So this SQLite is a, a command line interface or tool that allows us to be able to interact with my database. So I can just check for my tables. Then I'm going to list all the tables there, just like this one was able to list all the tables that I have here, right? So all these tables, right? Perfect. So these are the two main ways I can interact with my database. This is quite useful and quite interesting, but what if I am not on a, a, this particular system? Let's say I'm on, on a phone or something else. How do I interact with this particular stuff? What if I don't know command line interface? What if I don't know this particular stuff? I don't have enough memory for all of these things. That is where APIs come inside. So an API simply is a mediator, right? Between your database or your service and then your end user. It can be a web application, it can be a mobile device. So, so it allows us to be able to interact or communicate between your, your service, your database, and then several other devices. That is one way. Or another way is like, in case I have my database, my service here, and I want to be able to connect with people on Windows, right? On Android, on Macintosh, on Linux, or different browsers. I can use another alternative using an API. So an API is going to act as a messenger, as an intermediary, as an interface between my database and then my users and my developers. So it's very, very useful and very, very interesting. So we have seen that an API is very, it's an alternative, right? For communicating between applications or devices. Apart from using your graphic user interface or your command line interface, you can also use an API. So there are several types of APIs. So most of them, when we are talking about APIs, we are talking about REST API or web APIs. We also have native APIs. So in case I did design a programming language, I also create an API, right? Of how it's supposed to be like a protocol or a contract of how things are supposed to be. So we have native APIs, we have REST API. Then we can also have public API, which is general for everybody. We also have private APIs and we have internal APIs. So these are some of the basic ideas about APIs. So there are several tools you can use to work with APIs. So in this tutorial, we'll be trying to see how to work with Flux, how to work with Flash RESTful, Fast API, Hood, and then several of them. So let's start with it. But before we start, there are some basic things you're supposed to know. The most important thing you must know about APIs is request, right? Which are usually referring to the methods we use to approach or get your data, right? You can have get to retrieve information, can have post to add data to it, can have put to make some changes, and we can have delete to delete something. Just like here, in case I want to create a table, I can create a table. In case I want to edit something, I can edit something. Right? All of these things that we can do here, or I can do the same thing inside my terminal, right? Maybe select, you can select, and all of these things I can do with the request and then with the post, you can also do 
this same thing right that is the basic idea behind it so it's giving us the same functionalities but in a different approach that is with the request right with the request method and then also have a response so the response is going to be either a header and a body and a status so these are the main things you should understand about building api now let's see how to build it from scratch with python right so i'm just going to close from here then we'll be starting from scratch so i have my two folders here i have not installed three i can just install it with this let's install it three allows us to be able to visualize it very well so perfect so just finish so i can just go with three three is not a requirement right but i just wanted this to see so we'll be starting with how to work with fast api and how to work with flask so let's see how to do so i'll just move to my sublime building sublime and then we'll start working so let's build a simple api with flux right so the most important thing that you need to install is that you just need to install these particular packages so it's going to be pip install flux then you also need to install flux restful so you know whether it's like this restful and then you also need fast api and then uvcon and then you need hack right these are the things that you'll be using in this particular tutorial right so in case you have not installed you can just use this command to install it perfect now let's start working on it so i'm just going to build a simple api with flux then in the next session you're going to see how to build a simple api with different stuff so i'm just going to create my first file which i'll place inside my flux then i'm going to call it as app.py perfect right so let's see how to build a simple api with flux so it's just going to be from let's expand it so from flux import flux and then the next thing we need to build apis is that you can use the jsonify that is the simplest jsonify that is the simplest way of building an api with flux without any other third parties right with jsonify then i'm just going to initialize my app so init app then it's going to be our app it's going to be flux then i'm going to call it as a name then everything is going to create a simple if main app dot run then debug is called to true so after you're finished you're going to take off this and set this on to false right so everything we'll be doing will be going in between this particular place that's a basic idea right perfect so let's build our first route we're going to build our first route so to build our first route we're going to call it as app using the greatest app dot route then let's call it as simple something very basic then create a simple index file which will not take any method but this is going to return something very basic so let's say hello api right love this or something like that let's save this one and then let's run this simple app that we have built so it's going to be to run it we're just going to move to our location which is going to be our flux then run it with this particular option so python three we are using python three then app.py right so that's what we'll be trying to see how to launch and open it so it's going to use this particular url so i'll copy this url copy it and i'll use open it inside my browser perfect so you see that you can see our app built here so hello api love it right that is something simple about using flash to spin up something now let's see how to build an api with this particular stuff that you have built so it's going to be very simple it's going to go with this option so i'm going to first of all create a simple dictionary which is going to be let's go as our data right i'm going to call it as books right then i'm going to create a simple dictionary which is going to take something like let's say a title then we call it as let's say something very basic something very basic let's call it as python right for beginners and let's give it an id which is going to be an id of let's say one something very basic so these are all basic stuff right so i'll duplicate it so that you just have something simple to work with so i'm going to copy this one here right so something very basic right so this is something very basic so we have a simple dictionary right within a list right so that's what we're trying to do so how do we use this one as an api so to use it as an api can just come back to here so let's call the first route for our api api route and then in building apis you have to follow the best practice of apis right so we are just going to be giving 
going to create a simple route so app dot route then the first one we are going to be supplying is that we're going to give it an api then we give it a version right so version one right it's very very important to version your apis then you move on to the next option of let's say what you are doing so the resource we are trying to do is books so we're going to call it as books always make it plural right very very interesting so that is something very basic then i'm going to supply a method it's going to give us a method of get so we are using get for now to get data then i'm going to define my function so this function is going to be get books then i'll pass in nothing right so that's something very basic then i'll return jsonify i used to jsonify to convert this stuff that i have into something very interesting so i can just call go it in this particular option of let's say books then i'll pass in my books right something very basic so that is a basic idea so what you are doing is like you're not importing anything the only thing you are using is jsonify and then you have created a simple data and then you are using this particular option to view it so let's save it and then now let's run it everything is working as expected so in case i want to assess this particular api there are several ways we learn about that later i'm just going to go to this particular option then i'll pass in my api version one slash books if I go with slash books, it's going to print it out perfectly for me. Exactly, right? So that is how to use Flux without any other stuff, but with JSONify to be able to build a simple API. Very, very interesting. That is something very busy. So in case I also want to be able to fetch data from this, I can also do the same thing. So I can just copy the same thing that we have, which is going to be for fetching data. So let's call this one the same thing, but you're going to be passing in another alternative, right? So this is going to be, let's say, the ID. So I'll just pass in the ID here. Right, so in doing so, we have to just go with define the particular type of ID or define the ID. So this is going to be in this format. We can just call it as int. Then I'll pass in my ID, right? So int, then ID, something very basic. Perfect. And then what we need to do is that we need to pass in this particular ID inside our function. So let's call it as ID. And here, let's make it get book, right? So we are getting a book. So this is the basic one. We are getting all the books. We want to get a singular book. We are using the ID. And then from here, I can just create a simple list to help us do that. So let's put as a book, a single book. Then I'm going to go with a list comprehension, which is very, very useful. So book for book in my books, right? Referring to this particular books that we have here. For book in my books, if the book it's having this particular id this id is called to my id then return that book right that is something very basic then we are now going to return that singular book so if i save it now and i refresh it everything is working as expected it is taking the changes so in case i want to assess this particular books i just go back to here and back slash then let's give it an id of let's say one so if i go with one it's going to bring one which is referring to python for beginners that is how to build a simple api with jsonify without adding any other stuff right so that's how to build it without adding any other stuff very very interesting and very simple so with flux the most important thing is import flux and jsonify you create your data which is this your data that we have then you build your first route it's going to be your default route then you can also go on with this particular option so that is one way of doing it so this is one way of assessing it so now let's see another way so we'll be importing data from a place we'll be importing a bulk of data from this instead of this one you can just import some data so i'll import this data so this is the books json that you'll be using right so we'll be changing it from this simple one to anyone so let me copy this one and then let's duplicate this one right so this is going to be for old stuff so i can have access to this one so we call it as old app old app right so, or basic app something like that so that's something very basic so that we have it to check later on now i'm going to take off this and then i'm going to import our boost from that so how do we do that so i'm going to be using json so it's going to be very simple it's going to be import json then i'll be using json to help me load it so i'm going with with open we are opening our file so our file is in the same location as our flux which is this boost json so boost.json then i'm going to open it as f so it's a variable called f then let's call this one as boost then i'll pass it in as f dot or json dot load f 
that is all right so we have created the same thing that we have done so far now this our uh, json doesn't have an id it ha it's having a title so we can just give it title so let's change this one so let's change this one from int to string then we call this one as title right then we change this one and then this one and then this one to title perfect right so we are using title now to fetch our data very very interesting so the same idea that you have done but in this case we have imported our data from a file and we are using that particular data right so if i come back here and i go back and i refresh that's going to print a lot for us wow there's a lot of books right a lot of books so in case i want to fetch a data or a simple book i can just use this particular stuff here so we have pride and prejudice if i copy this one and i go back to the same thing version one slash this option then it's going to bring that book for us so that is how to build an api using flux and then JSONify. very very simple and very very basic so in the next session we're trying to see how to use another framework another tool or extension called flash rest for to be able to build our api so see you in the next session stay blessed